Welcome to Slutty Book Club, a feminist comedy book review for people who French braid their pubic hair. What's up, book sluts? Today we are bringing you The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson, and we're also bringing you a very special guest, the creator of How to Buy a Baby, Wendy Littner. She's also the author of SadInTheCity.com. You should check it out. It's very funny. She holds books on a tray really well. Wendela. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's head to bed. So give head. To me? Or Am I getting head? it? Or are you getting it? We'll see. Oh, finally. <laughs> the Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. So The Argonauts begins with Maggie Nelson, she's the author, talking about anal. So this is a memoir that charts Maggie Nelson's early relationship with her partner, the gender fluid Harry. And eventually, you'll figure out that Harry is gender fluid, although you'll spend the first bit of the book just wondering what the feck is going on. Anyway, they get married, and Harry and Nelson reflect really deeply on love, life, having a stepson, gender, sexuality, gender fluidity, body fluidity. Hmm? Hmm? Stop touching yourself. <laughs> and so eventually, you kind of start to feel like you're at a really poetic OBGYN appointment. It's like a poetic pap smear, in book form. Anyway, eventually Nelson's like, I need some good drugs or I'ma get that epidural. And she goes through IVF, she gets pregnant, she has a baby named Iggy who almost dies, but then everything turns out okay. And then we end on a really moving passage about, oh you know this is gonna be really hard, flying anuses and speeding vaginas but in the most meaningful way possible. I oh, we just do it a bit harder. Yeah, oh yeah, just get in there. What's, what are you doing? It is itchy. Can you just give it a scratch? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I forget how nice it is to read a book by someone who lives in this time, as opposed to the 17 or 1800s. It was great, I loved it. What did you think? I liked it, I wouldn't go so far as to love. I thought it was interesting. I also felt like it picked up momentum as it went through. I took sexual diversity studies at school and I felt like this was uh, one of my assigned readings. Wish that there had been more of a conversational tone, but I think that's just like personal taste. Well, yeah, because the th it's funny you say that because the thing that I really loved about this book was just how confessional it was. Like I felt like I was reading her diary. I actually felt at times like I was in her Mind, because really, she, yeah, because what she does that I loved is the way she writes in first person and then talks a lot about her partner Harry. Yeah, but like when she's talking about Harry, she's like, You, she's yeah. like, You say this to me, you do this to me, yeah. you make me feel. And I just weirdly felt like she was in love with me. This is the first book I've ever read by a woman that you haven't blown dust off of for, well, read it. for starters, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But this is also the first book by a woman that I've ever read where she talks so unabashedly about her love of anal and I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really interesting that she was talking about outlaw fetishes. What is that? Did um, I miss that? So, oh, sorry, outlaw fetishes. She talked about a particular guy who goes on homosexual adventures in countries where even hitting, like Romania, where even hitting on someone of the same sex is oh, punishable. Yeah. But they do it as like, like to, a thrill seeking. Yes, exactly. They're like, like, an, they're like yeah. adrenaline junkies, like, but. Like, oh yeah, you can get murdered for being gay in Russia. I'm gonna go there and hook up with a gay guy. I feel like I would rather, like, celebrate my identity in a country that's not going to murder me. Maybe they're just ninjas. Like, maybe they just know we can go to Russia and we'll just fuck people up if they try to kill us. <laughs> Something that I really liked about this book is just the ease with which. Maggie Nelson writes about her experience just being with a trans person. She doesn't make a huge deal out no. of it. She doesn't explain what being trans is and what the finer nuances of that experience are. She just, it's just her life and she brings you into it. Yeah. And I thought, I mean, this, I'm kind of ashamed to admit this, but this is the first book I've ever read about the trans experience, which is totally my bad. Like I fucked up guys. I just love how Maggie Nelson is just like, this is all the bullshit that white men tell us we should care about. And she just doesn't give a shit. And I, I really love that. I love the way that she just creates her own intellectual is landscape. This, like, I feel like we as women know that that's typical. We know that if you're pregnant, all of a sudden you're not in, 
if your intellect doesn't matter, you're now just a pregnant sweetheart. You're a pregnant dear heart. And that really annoys me and I just wonder, I feel like we probably understood that as a no-brainer, but I feel like, do men know that? I don't know, men are learning new things every day because women are allowed to speak now. <laughs> So one thing I thought was really interesting was, you know, you go through this whole journey with her and, and you're, you know, you're learning about her thought process and all these, and you know, what's influencing her and how she's feeling and her partner and their lives and their parents. And then it gets to the point where she finds out that she's having a boy and, and she's, she's like, upset. No. And I thought yeah. it was so interesting because she's done all this work about how you know, about gender identity and, and proving that, you know, this person is still amazing and it doesn't matter and yada, yada, yada. And then she was pissed that she was having a boy. And I know she said she wanted a mini me feminist, but it's like, you can still have that. You can create this wonderful boy who is also a feminist. There's no wonderful boy, Sarah. Why do we think feminists should read this book? She's a really progressive feminist and she's quite open-minded. And open butthold. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, she's just flapping in the wind. Yeah. Because I went to grad school, when I think of the experience that I had, so many men think, or at least acted, as if they thought that if you engaged with any traditional feminist kind of positions in society, like if you got pregnant, if you were going through a hard breakup, if you were, do if you were doing anything female, that you were somehow less of an intellectual. And I think, honestly, if there's a book that translates into this show and why we do this show and why we call the show Slutty Book Club. It's this one. I really love this book. I think this book should be the mascot for Slutty Book Club. And then, and then this quote. Mm. Genitals of all stripes are often slimy and pendulous and repulsive. That is part of their charm. Sarah and I decided to make a really fun game out of us taking this book personally. So what we've done is each chosen five lines from the Argonauts, which we feel either describes Sarah or Nikki. For every quote that Wendy gets correct, she gets a flying anus. And for every quote that she gets incorrect, she gets a speedy vagina. Womp, womp. Wendy, read okay. the quote. Inhaling egg shriveling nicotine in the dark, a cylinder of pepper spray by my side. I'm gonna guess Nikki because I know for a fact that Nikki carries pepper spray in her purse, which I always really appreciate because I never think I'm hot enough to need pepper spray. We're not gonna use that. <laughs> Did Wendy get it right? Yes. Woo! Quote okay. number two. Being married to me is like an epileptic with a pacemaker being married to a strobe light artist. I'm gonna guess Sarah just because she's married? You're not married. Aren't you married? No, but you were right anyway. <laughs> okay. I feel like all I did all day was meet other people's needs. I wanted my pillow and a magazine. Nikki? I actually can't remember. Yes! Always want a magazine. Always want a magazine. And a pillow. For sleeping or humping. Okay. If I attend a photo show that lacks nudes, I consider the visit a waste. Nikki. Ooh, yeah. Gotta be me. Yeah. So true. That one I got. Love titties. Okay. The option left to me, she writes, was to have a fling with the philosophers. I'm gonna guess Nikki again? I, I would normally think that was me, yeah. but Sarah did philosophy in school and is oh, into it. Oh, and you want to have a, okay, yeah. And she would definitely fuck all the philosophers. All the philosophers. Get a little young in my bung. Love it. A Get little a little Camus in my poo. Sartre in your partra. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little Kant in your cunt. Oh. Yeah. Yes, nailed it. Okay. Sprinkle gets up, pulls herself together, gives herself an Aphrodite award for sexual service to the community, Sarah. and performs a cleansing masturbatory ritual. Definitely Sarah. Sarah. I could see Sarah performing a cleansing masturbatory ritual, I think. Yes, and Is that weird that I can of the see that? Yeah. Wendy, yeah. you're a babe. Couldn't have done this yeah. episode without you. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Which is fucked up, because you're married. <laughs> in or out, the part of the show where we decide whether or not the Argonauts gets to go inside of our boxes. So let's bring in the boxes. Wendella. Box one. So graceful. Thank you. Thanks, baby. What do you think? I love this book. I felt like it really spoke to me. It was beautiful. It pulled me in just like a good memoir should. And I recommend that every human on earth reads this. So this book 
goes into my box as if it was a fist. Bam. So yeah, The Argonauts goes into, it definitely goes into my box. It was, uh, it was a great book. I'd recommend it to most people. Who wouldn't you recommend it to? I wouldn't recommend this to Donald Trump because he'd probably just get really mad and try and use it as like some sort of toupee. Okay, but hold on. Other. I think Donald Trump is exactly who should read this book. This book would blow Donald's mind. No, I don't think it would change his mind about If stuff. Donald Trump There's read this book. too many women quoted in here for him to even finish the whole book. Yeah. Anyway, goes in my box with not enough room for a fist to get in. Just like, what are you saying about my box then? That you're loose. But I'm not. I'm flappy. I mean, how do you know if you are or not? Just because no one's gonna tell you. I think if you've been fisting and you sneeze, sometimes things just fly out. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to STD. That means subscribe, tell all your friends, and discuss in the comments below. If you're not sure where to start talking, tell me. Could you tell how hungry I was watching this video? Is it showing on screen that I'm starving? No. Oh, you silly book sluts. As if we would have Wendy Littner on and not ask her what she <laughs> thought of this book. Wendela? Um, I really appreciate you guys having me on to talk about a book about motherhood when you know I'm struggling with infertility. Would you recommend The Argonauts to other women who are struggling with absolutely, infertility? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's just such a sobering, wonderful look at motherhood. It's just such a refreshing look at motherhood, at the just the authenticity that she writes about it, about her fears and also her love for her child and it's just, I feel like it's subversive in, without just like trying to be subversive. I feel like some people try and be like transgressive just to be transgressive and mm -hmm. I felt like very honest. hers was just this really like authentic Yeah, take she has on like mad queer street cred, right? Mad queer street cred, yeah. yeah. That's what I dream of for yeah. my life as well. Mad I think you've got mad, cred. yeah, I really? think you have that. Is that just because I hit on you 24-7? Yeah, and I appreciate yours it. Yours is more so like quasi queer street cred. Yeah, mom. Just quasi-queer. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs>